Hello again. A lot of you have asked me how come that there are certain vaccines where in the antibody levels start to wane after six months. We see some controversial news regarding Sinovac wherein there's a waning antibody level after six months. And do we need to worry? Let's watch this. So if you like my video, please click like, subscribe, and a notification bell so that you'll be informed of any uploaded videos to come every week. So in this REACT study that was published in England, looking at coronavirus antibody prevalence touted to fall within six months, they found out that in England, where majority of patients were given the mRNA Pfizer vaccines, there was a declining trend observed in all areas of the country and age groups. And they found out that decline was largest in people age 75 and above compared to younger people, indicating therefore that antibody response also do vary based on age and severity of illness. So this brings us to the controversy regarding Sinovac COVID-19 shot, which in several newspaper antibodies from Sinovac COVID-19 shot do fade after about six months and that booster may be needed. So this controversial news made a lot of Filipinos worry because this is the Sinovac vaccine that has been inoculated in majority of our Filipino patients. Now in this study for participants receiving two doses, two to four weeks apart, they found out that 16.9% and 35.2% respectively still had a level of neutralizing antibodies above the threshold six months after the second dose. So this worries about declining antibodies for me are really overblown. Or, should I say, do we really need to worry? First, we have to remember that it is normal for levels of antibodies in our blood to drop as the body clears an infection. So with vaccination that mimics the virus intruder, the antibody response also declines the same way. So meaning, it is normal that they do drop over time. But again, we have to remember that the immune cells do carry what we call as a memory of the virus, and therefore they can easily churn out new antibodies when needed or again exposed to the virus in the future. And this is all due to the so-called memory cell. So again, putting a controversial headline like antibodies after six months of Sinovac vaccination fades it gives us a worrisome issue. And therefore, controversial news like this is already very common with regard to the most maligned vaccine, which is Sinovac. But again, the headline does not really tell the whole truth. First, we have to remember that declining antibody levels, whether it's after an acute infection has resolved or after vaccination, is really a sign of how a normal immune response reacts. And again, clinical studies have shown that declining antibodies don't mean that those people are no longer have antibodies or no longer have protection. Why? Because we know from this study, the prevalence of coronavirus antibodies in a broader population can hold steady for at least four to seven months. Now remember also, that antibodies only represent one arm of the immune response. These are the ones easily reported in the news because antibodies against COVID-19 vaccines are the ones we can most easily measure. And therefore, we can always go to any labs in our city and get neutralizing antibodies to a COVID-19 vaccine. The problem is how do we interpret them? 
The basics of immunity states that there are at least three other branches of the immune system that can fend off the illness. Therefore, measuring antibody levels alone don't really tell the whole scenario. Now, this is what happens when the body encounters a pathogen. After exposure to a virus or after a vaccination, it rapidly produces antibodies that recognizes the invader. Once the acute infection resolves or after a few months of exposure to the vaccine, the antibodies normally decline as they must for purely practical reasons. Now, remember, our lymphatic system where the immune cells are stored only has a finite amount of space. Can you imagine if it will store all the antibodies from different viruses, then it will be detrimental to the system. So even if the circulating antibody levels are already undetectable, the body actually retains the memory of the pathogen through the so-called memory cells so that if it crosses the paths of the virus again, these balloon-like cells that live in the bone marrow can mass produce antibodies again within ours. Likewise, we have to remember people have immune cells called the T cells, and these are the cells that actually destroy the intruder or the virus. And the T cells are the ones that specifically attack the specific parts of the virus. So now these T cells are unlikely to prevent infection, but these are the cells that are recruited to prevent serious illness from the virus by blunting the attack. So given all that, interpreting low levels of antibody after vaccination to mean that immunity disappears or that the coronavirus vaccines will not be effective, for me, is wrong. How about the waning efficacy with the vaccines? We now have two new studies, one multinational review by Pfizer using mRNA and the other one in Israel representing the longest period of data we have yet showed that the vaccines too actually remain more than 90% effective in preventing severe disease. But apparently the same way as Sinovac does, the protection from infection from using the Pfizer vaccine begins also to fade out within six months. So how much, again, should we worry? Remember that the durability of our immunity to different pathogens varies greatly. Let's say, for example, we have flu vaccination that we have to do yearly. We also have immunity from tetanus that fades over 10 years, often longer. And of course, we also have the hepatitis B infection vaccine, where in three vaccine doses will provide us with lifelong protection. The reason why we lose protection over time from vaccination is because of antibodies. Our body's first defense against intruder really fades over time. And that's the reason we have the so-called memory B cells. If you look at the graph from the Arizona State University, once our body is again re-exposed to the same intruder, our body is again confronted by the virus, the B cells can simply stimulate new antibodies, it becomes automatic for these cells to respond. These memory B and T cells remember the virus they just fought. These cells then live long in the body for a long time so that even after all the viruses from the first infection have been destroyed, they stay in the ready mode to quickly recognize an attack any returning viruses. So I believe that the immune system is so well designed that the body's defense will likely be maintained well after the vaccine is administered. I want to quote a very prominent infectious disease specialist, UCSF, Dr. Monica Gandhi, who said that antibodies are our first line of defense that will stop the virus at the front door. But if ever the virus gets in, then you have these other lines of defense, like the B and the T cells that will protect you against getting sick or hospitalized. Remember, we have this memory B cells that will have persistent activity to make antibodies against the virus, targeting multiple parts of the virus, including the spike protein. And therefore, once we have established the so-called immune memory, it is definitely essential 
to our defense against COVID-19 infection. Likewise, infected or vaccinated patients will continue to mount durable antibodies, B cells and T cells against COVID-19 with the kinetics of these responses indicating a favorable course to achieve long-lived immunity. Just like the same, the best advice for everyone now is really to get vaccinated. We need to in tune our memory, B cells and T cells. So anytime our body is exposed to the virus, our body knows how to turn out these antibodies and our T cells know how to kill and fight these viruses. Again, this is Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.